In this video, we're going to look at state-of-the-art natural language processing, at least state-of-the-art as of the end of 2019. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Okay, what does state-of-the-art look like in terms of what these algorithms are actually doing. And in a moment, we'll also look at truly how are they measured? What is meant when you say a algorithm is state of the art? We'll see how some of these benchmarks actually work because this shows you easily what these algorithms are capable of, but also what they're not capable of. I think this is pretty fascinating that they are now doing this with a single model. Here we're looking at the Google T5 algorithm, which was released really just last month. It's number one on Glue. Well, it was number one on Glue until yesterday. Microsoft had an entry that just displaced it. We'll see what Glue is in a moment. That is a benchmarking site for these, one of three commonly used benchmarks for these kind of things. But look at what T5 can do. Translate English to German, colon, this is good. This is one model, not an ensemble of models, not something where you take all your translation tasks, all your grammar checking tasks, all your similarity tasks, and your summarizing tasks, and run them through three different things. This is literally one input sequence of, of letters to one output sequence of letters, and that's it. One column in on column out. That's pretty amazing. It has to literally learn from the data that the words translate English to German, that translate means, okay, it's going to translate, then you've got English into German. That is good becomes das ist gut. So that is, that's a pretty good translation. Probably a pretty poor pronunciation. I know some of my subscribers are native German speakers. Cola, this is using sort of a grammar and does the sentence really makes sense sort of training set. It was actually compiled from grammar books. This sentence, the course is jumping well. Well, courses don't jump well, so it's going to say not not acceptable. Even my course doesn't jump, so uh, I don't think any course actually jumps. It just does not make sense. So the, the model knows something about the sentence, and it can, it can pick up on bad grammar. It can pick up on just things that don't work well together. This noun does not tend to jump. Courses may put people to sleep, but they don't jump. STSB, this is just looking... STSB is a name of a common subcomponent of many of these benchmarks that we're going to look at in just a moment. But this is saying how similar are these two? The rhino grazed on the grass. A rhino is grazing in a field. Okay, fields are usually made up of grass, so yeah, this is, this is pretty similar. And then finally we have it summarized. So summarize, state authorities dispatched emergency crews Tuesday to survey the damage after an onslaught of severe weather in Mississippi, and it it summarizes this to something much, much smaller. And by the way, the dot, dot, dot shows that not the entire thing was here in the image because the six people hospitalized was probably somewhere further down here. Otherwise, I don't know where it would be pulling six from this. So that looks pretty amazing in terms of what these latest algorithms are capable of doing. Let's look at the abstract for the T5 model. It's using transfer learning, so it's using there's a number of natural language processing things. BERT is one of the big ones right now that you can transfer knowledge into your neural networks. Also the embeddings like GLOVE, word to vec those kind of things. It's a text-to-text -text format. That's what I was showing you where literally it's text in, text out. It's like the Star Trek computer. Translate this to German you're not giving it a column or something that tells it the task or even dealing with multiple models. We achieve state-of-the-art results. That's what I want to get into now because I find this part interesting. I will often see people who will ask me about natural language processing things and artificial intelligence things where they have seen a computer do something truly, truly amazing. And it's like, have we reached the singularity? Are we there yet? What is what is the IQ of a machine? Somebody just asked me that. And that's, that's a fantastically interesting question. What is the IQ of 
AI currently, it might well be zero because there's still key tasks that it simply cannot achieve. For it to truly pass a IQ test like you would like you would give a human child without pre-processing it and stretching it in such a way so that it was conducive for how AI needs input and output. So for natural language processing, there have been some fascinating models this 2018 and 2019, and heck, 2019 is not even done yet, and Microsoft just released one yesterday in December. So here is BERT. BERT came out in October 2018. BERT was really pretty amazing in terms of some of the test scores that it achieved on the standard benchmarking. Albert then took the extremely punishingly complex neural networks needed in BERT and made them much simpler and got better scores. Always a good thing. T5 builds upon this with Google and it gets a better score and also introduces some of the ways that it it's you're able to just give it the command as part of the actual text sentence. Now, how are these evaluated? These are the popular natural language processing benchmarks like Glue, Multi-NLI, and Squad. Of these, the one that I am the most familiar with, and it's also the newest one, one of the newer ones, there's, there's new ones coming out as well. Facebook was working on one that they released not that long ago, but we'll focus on Glue for now. Glue is a collection of tests, and let's have a look at what that looks like. So this is the web page for Glue. This is somewhat Kaggle-like, but somewhat not Kaggle-like. Similar concept in the fact that we have a leaderboard. And if you look at the leaderboard, it shows you T5 just literally 24 hours ago was in the number one position. Now we have the, a Microsoft entry that I have to admit I am not that familiar with. I'm not even that familiar with, with T5. It's, it's not that old. This is all within the last month, November, basically. If we look at the Microsoft model, you can see submitted the 5th of December, which was yesterday. So this, this stuff changes rapidly. It's kind of crazy. When we look at the leaderboard, you can see essentially the score. So it did not, it upped it by a pretty big amount, uh, 0.2, because you can see these others were just 0.1 increments here. It's... So uh, a, a decent improvement in the score. And then these are the components. So remember the cola that we saw for the grammar checking and does it make sense checking on the T5 slide that I was showing you? These are how it fared in all of these. So you can see, you can see individually how each of these scores are being measured. And you'd have to look at the paper for Super glue to get the actual performance criteria of each of these. I don't have the individual ones memorized off the top of my head. So let's look at these individual tests to get an idea of what it can do. Now something else that is very interesting looking at these individual benchmarks, this one here, human baselines. For the human baselines, what they essentially did is got some people together, probably undergraduate student volunteers, and they had the humans actually score themselves on this test. And what's interesting and completely misleading at the same time, when used improperly, is looking at this and basically saying, look, the AI has been beating the humans for quite some time now. I have literally seen this sort of misquoted, almost saying that we've reached the singularity because the machines are now outperforming the humans. Yes, machines are outperforming humans on many, many things like playing Go and playing chess and even driving cars when I compare them to that guy that I encountered this morning, but that's another story. So the point is on certain baseline tests, the machines are quite advanced, but it does not necessarily mean that they're advanced on everything. So I see that misquoted frequently on some of these tests. So these are the individual tests in glue. We'll go through some of these just to give you a flavor of these. I'm not going to go deep on any of these. This would be a very long video, but this shows you really what each of these tests is actually doing. This is all data that you can download. You need to run a Python script to actually download it. I have downloaded Glue, and you can literally run this, and it's almost like a Kaggle. You could submit your own result and if you're able to beat the state-of-the-art ones you can figure out i guess if you want to work for google microsoft or facebook 
or probably a few others as well. So this is the cola one that I showed you. This basically takes acceptable sentences and unacceptable sentences. We're looking at the top part up here. An acceptable sentence would be the angrier Sue gets, the more Fred admires her. That's fine. Unacceptable would be the most you the most you want, the more you want, the least you eat, the I guess less less you eat. So it's checking that those sentences are really just do they do they make any degree of sense whatsoever. Now, it's important to realize on these benchmarks that you're you're giving training and test data just like a Kaggle, but you're probably training on way more than the training data. You're probably using Wikipedia and other corpuses that are available for the You just use the glue training and test data set, the training in particular, to really teach these very general purpose models like glue, like BERT and other things, training and adapting those to the specific tasks that glue is giving you. Sentiment is Typical sentiment analysis. Natural language processing is good, pretty good at this. Positive, the greatest musicians. Yeah, that's pretty positive. That person does not sound unhappy with something. Sentiment analysis on this one. Negative, lend some dignity to a dumb story. Yeah, that's, that's negative. So that's classic sentiment analysis. The multi-sentence similarity tasks are looking at really two sentences. Previous ones were just a single sentence. This one is two. So we're looking at our sentences equivalent. He told the Sun newspaper that Mr. Hussein's daughters had British schools and hospitals in mind when they decided to ask for asylum. Okay. Second one is Saddam's daughters had British schools and hospitals in mind when they decided to ask for asylum, especially the schools, he told the Sun. Yeah, those are equivalent. But some of these I can see where even a human particularly this human, would potentially confuse certain things. Not equivalent, and this is a little harder. You have, to pay, you have to pay attention. This person, head of the local disaster unit, said the coach was carrying 38 passengers. The head of the disaster unit, same guy, said the coach driver had failed to heed the red stoplights. Boy, this is a hard one because, look, it's talking about similar but not exactly the same things. These two sentences probably came together in the same article, but they're telling you entirely different things. So this was a result of Bert and other things like this, probably learning relationships, multi-word relationships, and telling that these sentences, when it then sees them from things that probably learned in Wikipedia and other corpuses, are talking about different things. So this this is pretty cool. The I find the multi-sentence similarity task to be uh, to be somewhat interesting on this because it 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 does it seems like it seems like the NLP really has an understanding of what these sentences are actually saying. I love this one, Cora question pairs. This is based on a Kaggle, and I competed in this Kaggle. This was one of my better Kaggle competitions. I got a top seven percent in that one. This is looking at two sentences. Are these sentences asking the same thing? What are the coolest Android hacks and tricks you know? What are some cool hacks for Android phones? Yeah, those are largely asking the same thing. What's the difference between a hack and a trick? Pretty, pretty similar. But then different questions, and this is a hard one. Look at this. Donald Knuth appears in both. If you received a check from Donald Knuth, what did you do and why did you get it? And then how do I contact Donald Knuth. Donald Knuth sent fairly small checks out to people who found bugs in his books and other things like that. To find an error in Donald Knuth's work requires almost superhuman intelligence because Donald Knuth is, well, he's the father of computer science, for crying out loud. So these advanced, advanced, usually professors who would get these checks just hung them on their wall. Why would, why would you cash a Donald Knuth check? That's pretty much a certificate attesting to your brainiacness. So that's what that sentence is talking about, by the way. But how can you contact Donald Knuth? That's a totally, totally different question. This is also interesting because it shows how much of these sentences the NLP can appear to understand. Same sentences, a plane is talk taking off, an airplane is taking off. Similar in terms of their, their makeup, but a woman is dancing and a man is talking. Very different. Some of these sentences in here are more difficult, just a simple 
text lineup, there's pretty much alignment between these, but they, they can deal with much more complicated sentences than these. This is inference, and inference is really fascinating because it looks like it's really starting to understand some of what is in the sentences. So do the two sentences contradict or do they build on each other? A contradiction at the end of the rue, a bunch of French words, is what many consider to be the city's most handsome residential square, the palace, other words I'm not going to try to pronounce, with its stone and red brick facades. Uh, the, the place uh, is constructed entirely of gray marble. So those are a contradiction. This is saying it was made out of red brick. This is saying it was made out of marble. I burst through a set of cabin doors and fell to the ground. I burst through the doors and fell down. This is building on or enforcing each other. And then this is going with that same task on the previous slide, neutral. These are just two sentences that are just not about each other. It is not that the questions they asked weren't interesting or legitimate. And then the second one, all of the questions were interesting according to a focus group consulted on the subject. So these two sentences are similar, but they're not at all any connection sort of between them. So this just gives you a sampling of some of the kinds of questions that are inside of glue. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in natural language processing and other artificial intelligence topics, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.